Alex Duval, um, we're going to turn now um, from what's happening in Gaza. We'll link to your piece we're about to witness in Gaza, the most intense uh, famine since the Second World War. We now turn to Sudan, where around half the population has become reliant on food aid. As the United Nations warns, the war-torn country is on track to become the world's worst hunger crisis. Malnutrition is soaring to alarming levels and is already claiming children's lives. A recent MSF report revealed that one child in, is dying every two hours in Zamzam camp in El Fasha, North Darfur. Our humanitarian partners estimate that in the coming weeks and months, somewhere in the region of around 222,000 children could die from malnutrition. And with the estimated WHO estimates that more than 70 percent of health facilities are not functional. The conflict between the Sudanese military and the rival Rapid Support Forces, or RSF, erupted nearly a year ago, on April 15, 2023. It's displaced over 8 million people, around 90 percent of the population facing emergency levels of food and security in Sudan are in Khartoum, Darfur and Kordofan, areas which have seen some of the most intense fighting. But the U.N.'s appeal for $2.7 billion for, uh, for Sudan is less than 5 percent funded. Aid's also drying up in Chad, where some 1.2 million Sudanese have taken refuge. The war has also led to many reports of armed forces using rape and sexual violence as a weapon, and some 19 million children have been deprived of school. Alex Duvall, famine is your area of expertise. You're executive director of the World, Food, uh, World Peace Foundation at Tufts University and author of the book Mass Starvation, The History and Future of Famine. Um, what concerns you most about what's happening in Sudan right now? So Sudan is a different kind of, of food crisis and famine compared to Gaza. This is one of enormous magnitude. The sheer numbers that are, are, are afflicted are, are, are hard to, to, to grapple with. Sudan is a country of almost 50 million people. Half of them um, are in emergency uh, situation now. You said earlier, reliant on food aid. Frankly, unfortunately, the food aid is not there. Even as we speak, the World Food Programme, which is the largest food aid, aid, aid producer, is cutting its budget. It's cutting its staff by 30 percent because it's not getting uh, the money it needs. It's not a perfect system by any means, but it's the only system that we've got. And what particularly alarms me about Sudan um, are really three things. Number one is that, unlike previous food crises in Sudan, the actual core of the economy is being destroyed. The breadbasket of Sudan is not functioning, is not growing food. Secondly, it's a crisis not just in Sudan. Most of the neighbors are affected. You mentioned Chad, also South, South Sudan, formerly part of Sudan, is also facing a major food emergency. And Ethiopia next door at the same time. And we've never seen so many neighboring countries in this region descending into food emergency at the same time. And this is all happening while the international emergency system is being squeezed. It's facing uh, major cuts. We are simply not um, responding as, as, as required. It's quite, quite calamitous. I wanted to go to a clip um, from UNICEF, uh, which warns hundreds of thousands of Sudanese children are suffering from severe malnutrition. This is Jill Lawler, chief of field operations and emergency for UNICEF in Sudan. The numbers of acutely malnourished children are rising, and the lean season hasn't even begun. Nearly 3.7 million children are projected to be acutely malnourished this year in Sudan, including 730,000 who need life-saving treatment. The needs for children in Khartoum alone are massive. But this is also true in Darfur, where I was last month on a cross-border mission through Chad. The scale and magnitude of needs for children across the country are simply staggering. Sudan is now the world's largest displacement crisis. 
and some of the most vulnerable children are in the hardest to reach places. So how is this remedied, uh, Alex Duvall? Again, nearly 230,000 children, pregnant mothers and new mothers could die, it's being predicted, in the next few months due to hunger. Indeed, this is the, the largest sort of mass mortality crisis that we are, that we are facing in the world, and the largest that we have probably faced for many decades, certainly the largest since I started working on, on, on this topic 40 years ago at the time of the Ethiopian and Sudanese famines that, were, that many will remember from the live aid concerts. Um, how is it to be stopped? I mean, the, the two most immediate things are um, a, a ceasefire and, and the end to the destruction of, of what is necessary to sustain life and, and produce food in, in Sudan. And there doesn't seem to be much sign of that. There's not really much pressure on the warring parties to, um, to come to any sort of even basic agreement. They seem to want to continue um, to fight it out. And various countries are pouring in arms into the country to escalate the conflict. But the other is is, is also to, to fund this humanitarian operation that is, uh, as you mentioned, totally underfunded at the moment. It, it, there, there are almost no resources available to, to, to provide the necessities for people. And in fact, the World Food Program, you know, we were talking about Gaza, we were talking about the massive cuts to UNRWA. The World Food Program of the United Nations has also massive cuts. In, in, indeed, it's shocking. I was trying to talk just a few days ago to um, to some old um, colleagues who, who who work on these issues, and I find that that, that, that they've been reassigned or they've lost their jobs. Um, we only have one global emergency response system at the moment, and um, and that is centered upon the World Food Programme. And so we need to make it work, because if it doesn't work, we're, um, we're going to find uh, ourselves facing the kinds of crises of, of mass mortality that we have simply not seen for um, half a century or, or longer. Well, Alex Saval, we thank you so much for being with us, executive director of the World Peace Foundation at Tufts University, author of the book Mass Starvation, the History and Future of Famine. We'll link to your pieces on Sudan and Gaza and more. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! is produced with Renee Feltz, Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Shruha Dokudus, Messiah Rhodes, Nermeen Sheikh, Maria Tarasena, Tammy Warrenoff, Charina Nadura, Sam Alkoff, Tamari Studio, John Hamilton, Ravi Karen, Hani Masood, and Hannah Elias. Our executive director is Julie Crosby. Special thanks to Becca Staley, John Randolph, Paul Powell, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara. I am Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.